Oh, I think it's on. All right, all right. It's 6.32. It is July 26th. It's not the day to have technical difficulties on Fed Day, right? Uh, July 26th, 6.32. Um, let's get the charts going here. Uh, that's the S&P Cash. Wow. My name is Scott Rutherford. I'm the Chief Strategic Officer of T3Live.com. Welcome to the 6.30 Club. It is a busy day. Lots of moving pieces. Lots of earnings. Um, we got the Fed at 2. We got a press conference at 2.30. Will this be the last raise of this raising cycle? Has the economy been normalized enough? Will we do another quarter in the fall? <laughs> Will the market hold higher? Will the rotation continue? You know, can some stocks make higher highs? Anyway, let me say hello to some of my friends around the world. What's up, Tequester? How you doing, Teaching Jaw? What up, Don Mullen Island? I'm very consistent. Got Texas in the house, Connecticut. Uh, <laughs> raise your raise. Well, I will say that I drove by Wawa today, you know, to get my uh, Dunkin' Donuts iced coffee, and gas has actually went up from 340 to 365. So it's not like inflation is friggin' disinflating everywhere it with crazy force, and it's not like the stock market has cared that much. So the question is, you know, does he really want to slow things down and go a quarter, and then maybe another quarter, and another quarter, um, or is he going to do a quarter? Declare victory, and then we can have another, you know, move in the S&P. We'll see. Oh, Mykonos is here. What up, Mykonos? Uh, you know what? I've never been to Greece. I'd like to go to Greece. Um, I am going to Spain the last two weeks of uh, August. So if you're in Spain, going to Marbella with uh, the family. Getting to see actually a few friends out there, some subscribers as well. Anyway, um, so look at this chart. Look at this. What do you see here? You know, I see such a beautiful picture. So, so many different ways to navigate this active sequence. Uh, some people are like, hey, Red Dog, is the bull market over now that Wilson finally came out and said he was wrong? You know, he was, he was right about the narrative, but wrong about the price action. <laughs> it doesn't make you money being right about a narrative and, 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 you know, and being bearish and blowing some people up along the way. But anyway, you know, this is, look at this, just this pattern here. You know, you, you see this huge cup. You know, this could have been the handle and your channel. So many ways to navigate. One right here. This was uh, in March. That was when this descending uh, trend line broke to the upside with a gap, a gap and go. You know, and then uh, hit some resistance, had it consolidated, and then it finally got above 4,200 to 4,580. Wow. <laughs> you know, definitely a lot of different ways traders had to manage it and different flavors of a week or a month, depending on what was happening, whether it was tech in Fuego, whether it was, you know, small caps getting some rotation in June or the banks the last two weeks, you know, you had um, Apple led the way for a big portion of it. And then you had the, the catch up by Google and, and Amazon. And then you had Tesla and Fuego in, in May. And anyway, <laughs> that was then this is now, right? What have you done for me lately? Well, here we are. You know, this is this is the S and P cash. Uh, we hit a high of 45.80. Um, it was getting real tight yesterday. It pushed above 45.63. Um, look at this coincidence. You know, we've been pretty much above the eight-day and 21-day moving average since 4,200. That's why I've written a few ebooks about the eight and 21-day. As long as you're above the eight and 21-day, you're opportunistic and you're bullish. Um, anyway. Uh, sometimes there's volatility. Didn't you say months ago that if the S&P would be this high? Um, I missed that last part of it. Uh, well, I'd say if the S&P continues, they're not going to lower rates. Everyone was saying they're going to lower rates. I'm like, <laughs> they're not going to lower rates uh, with the S&P and the market doing as well. Like if the market fell 10, 15, 20%, yes, they would lower rates in the second half or even next year. You know, but while the market's still continuing to, to make higher highs, you know, they're probably going to keep inching rates up because they need to slow things down. So, you know, we're not going to pay gas $5 again, and they're not going to have bidding wars for houses and, you know, whatever. Anyway, um, so with that being said, there's, there's definitely a lot of different type of volatility on a day like the Fed. Usually you get four or five moves between 2 and 3 o'clock and 3.15 and then at 3.30. Sometimes a trend develops. And then the day after, it could be a counter trend day or who knows. At this point, though, I'm trying to I'm trying to look for setups. I'm not looking for recessions. I'm not looking for tops. 
I'm looking for setups to continue to maneuver so I can net money and get a paycheck. I get a paycheck quarterly besides being the chief strategic officer based on my trading. Yes, I would say 75% of my money is from trading. Anyway, um, so what do we have here? So you have the spies right now are down 50 cents. Um, so a whole 50 cents, 454.90. Um, if you go back to the spies here, um, it did hit a high of 456.73. So it's kind of right back to this 455. Um, I guess we can move this up a little bit. Uh, this low here is what, 452.30. Um, if they're going to shake things up today, um, probably have to break below this 452.30 spot. Um, and then maybe uh, you can get some kind of uh, void here if that's, what the, if that's what the market wants to do. If, uh, if it wants to see 460, what does it have to do? It's got to get above and stay above. 456.73 first. Um, the Qs that corrected three whole percent off the highs, you know, did give a little bit of a pushback. As I said, that this 380 is some resistance from 388. Oh, that's off. Um, to uh, 374.35, that was three percent. Is this going to be a lower high for more downside? Hard to say. At this point, you know, last week was a better sell than a buy, and this week maybe a little bit better buy depending on where you look. So, you know, during earnings season, I do not take stock into earnings. I try and play some call spreads. So what did I do yesterday? I took a Google call spread. Yes, I'm a 125 by 131, which should be maxed out. Um, I did it with the rationale that Google, you know, hasn't gone back to all-time highs like in Microsoft. It's not... Price crazy for perfection. The P is still kind of low. So so Google, um, what's it called? Uh, did get above 127 and 129 after hours. If you were trading it after hours, um, I just have a call spread on. It's now right now at a what is it? It's a 130, um, which is nice. Uh, I I'm capped out at 131. Um, so I, I, you know, being around here for the right, well, who knows? You have the Fed and stuff. It, you know, it's a, it's a nice move. Um, but I also played Snap, <laughs> and Snap for the fifth time they, they you know they lowered their guidance the next quarter and the stock's down 18 percent. So I will lose the money in that call spread. So that is a wash, which is fine. Okay, a lot of people like earnings season because they like these lotto type trades. And for me, I it's you know there was action during earnings season, but I like it a few weeks after when I could just you know ride the charts. And uh, not have like binary big events to trade around, but anyway. So that said, um, we'll see if uh, Google could stay above this 129.03. If it does, um, you know, it could continue. We'll see what type of gap we have today. You know, if you read my ebook about gaps, you gap up and then you make a low today. Maybe you can even buy the shares versus that gap and see if you get a continuation of that move. We'll see. Um, Microsoft wasn't horrible. It's just it was fine. You can't have a fine report at, at all-time highs almost. So where is their support in Microsoft? Uh, let's see. Um, Microsoft is trading right now at uh, uh, right there, down almost 4%. Not the biggest deal. Um, to 338. Um, so it's, <laughs> Microsoft isn't even here. It's not even at uh, <laughs> this 327. Jeez, look at that. Hold on, let me go. Microsoft's trading at 337. So this is right here. This is 339. So it's kind of below this spot, but above this spot. So it's kind of like no man's land. So if, you know, I would wait to see if you want to play um, Microsoft, it, let it put a low in, maybe 335, come off the low, and then, you know, and then maybe you could buy Verse app, but then if it doesn't show relative strength, it could be. Uh, a move like Tesla, if you remember Tesla, post earnings, you know, gave you a big gap and go to the downside, you know. So if you tried buying on earnings day, uh, post earnings day after this gap, it trended down all day. So anyway, so, um, you know, and then left this big hole in the chart. And that's why we're very tactical with Tesla now, because, you know, it needs time to rebuild. There was a nice little red dog reversal in Tesla right here, if you remember. Yes, see, 24 hours ago at this point, I talked about how it went below 255.80, hit 254.13. It was a great entry. Took back 261. And I said, <laughs> people are like, where could it go? I'm like, well, maybe you can go to 274. Pretty close, 272.90. Anyway, um, so that's why you take trades. Now what's Tesla doing this morning? Eh, 
It's down a buck twenty, maybe. There's a trade in Tesla for it to go from down a dollar to up a few dollars, and you can make you know a thousand bucks or so. You know, I'll look at it to see if you know maybe if the market comes in, it doesn't go in, it tries to go green. That's how I'm trading some of these things now. I'm not always just sitting in 15 positions, especially when you get to be a little wishy-washy. But anyway, so this low here is what? This is 265. So you put that in there, and um, somebody said they saw a cyber truck. Um, I have one more year left in my Jeep. I've been thinking about the cyber truck, but I don't think it'll fit in my garage. Anyway, um, Lucid and Rivian. Rivian's a pain in the butt, I'll be honest. You know, I have options and you know, I do try and buy the stock here and there, but if you ever try and buy a little strength in Rivian, you know, it's 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 very, very choppy. There's still a huge short interest. There's still a lot of people betting against this. It is above the eight days, hanging in here. Um I, the, the the best way to do it is maybe go out and buy options and try not to overtrade it. I lost a bunch of money on Friday buying the twenty sevens, you know, and then it and um, it didn't work and then it just hung in there. All in all, though, you know, chart still looks pretty good. I still have options on. Um, and at some point, maybe it takes out this 27 with force. It's probably going to need some kind of catalyst. Um, and we'll see how it goes. As far as Lucid, I haven't traded this one in, in, in three weeks, ever since the bad delivery numbers came out. You know, we had a good trade here where I had the $8 calls when it was $7.50. And I think we tri tripled our options. And then I have a bunch left over for August, so I haven't really traded it because it's not really doing anything. Um, so sometimes half the trade works and sometimes half doesn't work. It's not always, you know, a clear-cut huge success. Um, some people ask me, what, you know, is AMD back? AMD has been a pain in the ass, to be honest. Uh, ever since this double top up here, you know, you had a big move lower and then you had another double top. And yesterday, yesterday was pretty strong, you know, for it. Um, so I did buy a little bit yesterday just for a trade, no follow through this morning. Um, so we'll see. Maybe maybe AMD goes from like red to green. Um, it's not down a whole lot. It's down uh, 40 cents. So we'll see. I'm not going to, you know, it's not really not on my go-to list as much. You know, NVIDIA, um, you know, did give another trade. Remember I talked to you guys about this doji. There was a doji, doji style, you know, right here, you know, from 480 down to here, it held support, got above this 450.109 yesterday and gave you a 10 point move, which again, trades are trades. You know, you just, sometimes you just want to intraday trade a lot or do day and a half trades, sometimes more than that, depending on if things are making higher highs and higher lows. Thoughts on Amazon? Amazon has been choppy. I haven't really traded Amazon in weeks just because it hasn't really had much follow through. It's been choppy one day up, one day down. That There is some chatter out there that we might get news out of Washington. You know, they want to try and break up Amazon. Okay. We've heard that before, but but basically, you know, I just don't think it's it's really worth trading. It looks like I actually could break this spot here, um, but probably it's going to be hard to do that pre-earnings and pre-fed, but all in all, um, this candle right here got most active traders out of the name. And now it's like kind of holding on by a thread and it's probably lower this morning. Let's see where Amazon is this morning. Down 233, 126.80. Um, yeah, you know, I guess you can move this up. Here's your 50 day. Um, so if the market wants to get hit a little bit today, um, it could see uh, a little bit lower. Um, but again, like I sometimes these these names are awesome. Every day they give you, you know, success and you can net money. And sometimes it's just an avoid. Look, yeah, this is what I wrote yesterday. Amazon is choppier like most of tech. It hit a low of 120.41 to use this week. Earnings are until next week. Pivot resistance is 131, 132. Hey, look at that. That's where it got rejected. Anyway, that might have even been two days ago. So I'm not I'm not really so excited about this day. I'm gonna take it slow. Um, again, my Snap options are gonna be worthless. My Google options will be worth a lot. They were gonna wash each other out. Um, you know, we've had a really good move in lots of different names. You know, we remember we could go, we we're buying Bank of America, you know, in here. And I got rid of it actually on this day before that. So that was nice. You know, little little baby Pfizer was good also to fill the gap. Wow, we sold that well too a bunch of days ago. Um, you know, some guys have been playing Oxy. Uh, broke above this wedge pattern. It's on its way to 65 um, or the XLE. Um, you know, you had some moves here and there. Um, like AI was decent and just, uh, you know, China, China, 
I was uh, buying the FXI, uh, accumulating it the past week or two, and then the Hang Seng had a 4% move, and that was good. Oh, NEO was really good. NEO um, put it a topping tail yesterday, but I've been long NEO since here. You know, uh, I did sell the majority of my options. I have 25% left. What we call that, we call that a runner, meaning, you know, you, you take your trade and you have some continue just in case if it wants to go higher. So I did sell most of it into that. Uh, you know, it was good to add on this day when it took back the 200 day, good to sell on that day as it got a little extended. Entries and exits matter. Um, but all in all, you know, we'll see what today brings. Spies are down 60 cents, the Qs are down, um, you know, at 77 cents. Um, uh, Amazon, again, listen up. There's talk that uh, they want to break it up. Or, you know, we've heard that before. And, um, and see how it goes. Spies are pretty tight. Um, if you look here, 456.73. In order to get to 460, it's got to get above 456.73. And then if they want to finally hit the market a bit, because now Mike Wilson, the biggest bear out there, <laughs> admitted he's wrong. It's usually that that's a sign of a <laughs> something might switch. Anyway, I'm not giving him a hard time. I'm just saying, um, you know, it has to break 452 to maybe see a move towards 445. So heavy levels. Don't get chopped up i've been chopped up on fed day before usually again there's three four moves within that hour between two and three and then we get some kind of trend around 330 to four and then we'll see you know what what leads what um i am not going to be here tomorrow there'll be no 630 club i'm going to florida yes i meet my wife in florida who's been in florida all week with my son at img he's at basketball um so i promise i would come down thursday so we could have two nights before we go get him. It is the summertime, but I wanted to make sure I would be here for Fed Day through lots of earnings. Met is tonight. I'm probably going to have no options in that one. And uh, I, I just got my laptop so I could trade from there and do some of my stuff. It is hot. I'm going to Sarasota, right? Except they're going on the west side. It's not as bad. And, um, and that's that. I appreciate you guys tuning in. I wish I had more. I don't love this setup here. I just would rather, I just want to continue to you know, keep it kind of tight, uh, net money. It's been a really good July for me. I had a bunch of different options trades that work. You know, remember this BBIO? That was two weeks ago. That was a nice trade, by the way. By the way, I think, you know, this is a, a, a really compelling story where if you wanted to, I don't, there's talk that they might do a money raise, so be careful. If they do do a money raise and this BBIO gets hit, what I would do if I were you, I would go out to September or October and buy upside calls. You know, because I don't think that this story is over. It's got a, a nice future. So um, at this point, it went from 36 to here. We, we were buying options in there, and that was a grand slam home of a dollar to over 14. So if you want, you know, accumulate some calls, small, for the fall, because I do think that could be a good time for this this name. That's what someone just asked me about that before. And anyway, so I'll do some charts. I have about 40 charts I got to do. Got to start hanging out with the Alpha team, which is my crew. And uh, get ready for the day. It's going to be a busy one. Don't overtrade. Sometimes you can undertrade and and save yourself some money. Good luck today, guys.